Hello, thank you for joining this Hewlett Packard Enterprise demonstration. Today we're going to be talking about building dynamic machine learning pipelines with KubeDirector. My name is Don Wake. I'm a technical marketing engineer with Hewlett Packard Enterprise. And joining me today are Kartik Matter and Tom Phelan. We're going to talk about how an open source technology that works uh, within a native Kubernetes environment can help you with deploying enterprise artificial intelligence and machine learning pipelines at scale and remove some of the complexity, keep your models in sync, and help you extend the capabilities of Kubernetes itself and get to that point where you can operationalize your model and not fall into the category as Gartner describes here as the 60% of models that never really get to the finish line and give you the value, extract the value uh, from your data that you're looking for. To help Kubernetes users extract the value from their data and overcome these challenges of operationalizing their machine learning models, we developed KubeDirector. KubeDirector is in fact a CNCF open source project under the Kubernetes umbrella and is designed to run stateful applications well in Kubernetes. It is implemented as a Kubernetes custom controller. That means it's a piece of Go code that you load into Kubernetes clusters and then with that operator, also known as a custom resource definition, you can pass it YAML files which then allow you to run many different types of stateful applications key here is that you then don't have to write your own custom resource definition. This makes it much easier to run a collection of stateful applications on Kubernetes. And this is exactly what we're doing today. And our collection of stateful applications is an AI ML pipeline. Tom, can you explain the high level architecture of KubeDirector and how it is deployed into a Kubernetes cluster? Uh, KubeDirector is a custom resource definition. It can be installed uh, inside a Kubernetes cluster. That's what's done with this uh, create, cube, cube kernel create. We're actually deploying the uh, cube director uh, CRD itself. And what I'm showing here in the graph is that uh, this, this, uh, app, this CRD uh, just works like any other Kubernetes operator. It has a reconciliation loop. It takes in information, takes in configure inf configuration information, instantiates a one pod or multiple pods of a particular application and then manages the life cycle of that application. So if you want to change the configuration of that particular application cluster, you author another YAML file, pass it to the cube director CRD. The cube director would then uh, do the reconciliation to bring the, the running instance of that application into alignment of the configuration of the file that was just specified. And this can be done with, res with respect to multiple different types of roles of containers. And that, that means that's a different uh, so piece of software perhaps running in one container of a pod for that particular application. You'll have multiple roles, multiple users, multiple different types of configurations. They can be derived from one or more images uh, residing in the container image uh, repository. Awesome, thanks Tom. So that's how KubeDirector will fit into your standard Kubernetes environment. Um, with KubeDirector now, we're going to implement this basic machine learning pipeline. We're gonna show you how to create KubeDirector clusters, KD clusters, and KubeDirector applications, KD apps to do training, registration, inferencing, all around some central repository, and make that all dynamic. Make sure that the clusters can stay in communication with each other and the central model. So let's get down to some specifics. To run our pipeline, we need KubeDirector to manage three stateful applications. They are a training engine, a Jupyter notebook, and a deployment engine. They're all defined in a JSON format available on the KubeDirector GitHub, and they are deployed into our Kubernetes cluster using simple kubectl commands. Kartik, can you explain a bit more about KD apps? So KD app is where, you know, an application developer can define everything about, about an application. Cube director uh, uh, in, inherently has no knowledge about your application. You know, what is it going to look like? What will be the roles? What are the services, ports, URL scheme? Uh, are the endpoints uh, secured or not? All that expressiveness comes into uh, what in the JSON file or, or it could be a YAML for Cube Director application. Great, so we'll use KD apps inside our Kubernetes cluster to create an AI ML pipeline to predict 
taxi ride times. So Kartik, I guess we need to create clusters of these apps uh, to find these answers. So describe KD clusters for us. So we have already talked about KD app. Uh, now KD app, uh, the, the application developer has defined, you know, what are the roles, what are my services? It's like a template. Uh, and now this comes the more interesting part, which is the actual instantiation of that particular template where you ask Kubernetes for resources. So CPU, memory, that sort of thing. CPU, memory, you could even have GPU. Uh, this particular example, we don't have it, but yeah, we have examples for GPUs as well. So we have a kube director applications, we have clusters uh, instantiating those applications. Now we can connect them all together, I guess. So a kube director cluster can be connected to another kube director cluster could be connected a, a config map or to a secret. Uh, using that, Cube Director uh, reads that particular resource and gets all the metadata, bake it inside your config meta so that the parent cluster can react or make use out of that. Uh, we will talk about how config map is relevant to this particular example, uh, but we are representing the concept of a machine learning model in a config map here. So all metadata related to a machine learning model is baked in a config map. Config map is a native Kubernetes resource. Uh, using connection uh, feature, the training cluster will know about your model. Yeah, in this particular slide. So that's what we're visualizing here. At the end of the day, uh, once we've launched all of our Kube Director clusters uh, that Tom and Cardiff have explained, um, they will store their uh, information in a persistent storage repository that each of the clusters uh, will have access to uh, and they have access to each other via the connection. So to create this pipeline, uh, we're going to need to take the, the KD apps that we defined earlier uh, in the JSON format, and then we're going to create clusters uh, that really launch these, uh, these KD apps as KD clusters. So let's talk about how we're going to do that. So this is a very simple uh, standard kubectl create, basically just make a REST API post to create another cluster uh, using the YAML that we have already seen before for, for the training. Okay, so just a simple kube cuddle create command with a YAML mm -hmm. file and then the we YAML have that. Line. Yeah, then that's boom, you get your training cluster now. Now we have a notebook KD cluster. Right, so notebook is where the data scientists will be finally uh, you know, get a chance to write their uh, machine learning code. And that's the thing that they are most skilled in and they are most interested in. Uh, everything else, uh, you know, the infrastructure plumbing and stuff, uh, using KD, we were showing how can KD takes care of, of a lot of those. But it could be a huge headache if, if somebody like a data scientist has to come up or organize and manage all of that. Yeah, removing a lot of headaches here, uh, especially uh, noting the connection stanza within this Jupyter Notebook YAML file that literally connects the uh, Jupyter Notebook cluster to the training engine instance. This is a snapshot of the uh, Jupyter example that comes out of the box with Cube Director. Uh, once you download Cube Director, you get this application out of the box where we have extended the concept of uh, magics in a notebook. Uh, so using the attachment magic, we know what are uh, the connections to this notebook or what training cluster can I submit my code to. Uh, once you have that, you just take the name of the training cluster. Your entire machine learning code can just, uh, you know, whatever Python code, that doesn't have to change. As is, you just take it in. Only thing first uh, line you change because you want it to be run uh, remotely and not locally. Uh, the next step now, you uh, mentioned config uh, map resource a few times. So now we're at that point where we have to define this. Right. So in this example, we are serializing the model so that, you know, we can deploy it. And deployment is interesting because uh, people, uh, so that we can share the endpoint and anybody can make inferencing call to that particular model. So we associate some metadata with respect to the serialized model. And that's all this config map is. It tells you where, what path did we serialize this model on and what is the scoring, uh, scoring script. Scoring script is, has the logic about how to deserialize the model. And once you get new input, how to plug it into the model. 
this can be very specific to model or it could be generic. So it's again up to the application developer, up, up to the data scientist, how they have defined this. And these paths are, are the in pod path, you know, because the example, the external storage is mounted as that path, VDFS, MNT, but depending on how you choose to do it, it could change. Right, this is the persistent storage layer you know, Correct. sort of defined here that we've, we're showing Correct. a diagram. So that, that path there that you're showing here in the config map is how we all get connected here. Exactly. All right, great. So we've defined the config map and now we're going to apply that config map to our inference KD cluster, I take it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's now you spin up another uh, runtime, which is your deployment engine. We already have talked about KD app and KD cluster. So like you had KD app for training, you had another KD app for uh, notebook. Now you must have had another KD app for deployment where you define how your deployment would look like. Once you have that, then you uh, spin off your finally deployment cluster using that KD app. Uh, in While doing that, you tell what model are you interested in. And that's what will go under connections under config map. Okay, so here's tying it all together then this TensorFlow model. Right. And, and we've been talking about the connections feature. So this is very configurable for a running cluster. So this model can be edited. You can remove this model. You can add new model. You can retrain. You can reversion. And all that uh, will just seamlessly flow. Okay. So you could update this dynamically. Dynamically. And uh, KD propagates the real-time changes uh, inside every pod. Excellent. So here is our pipeline. Uh, we deployed KD clusters for ML training for a Jupyter Notebook cluster, and then finally the inference deployment with that config map definition allowing us to keep everything connected. What is our final takeaway uh, looking at this diagram? Just, just last thing is once you have your uh, running deployment cluster, uh, you can do a get on that particular cluster, and that gives you the final endpoint URL. That, that you are interested in for, for a given model. Uh, and then that is the URL that you can share with anybody who can make use of this model. Okay, so then um, once you have that connection here to the inference deployment, that URL, you can do something like this. This is a, a series of REST commands inside maybe a, a... This is, yeah, a Python request client just making REST API call, which is the most you know common way to consume a model. It could be an RPC or uh, again, we do but it's, it's bi-directional here. I see you're actually modifying um, input parameters and then getting out. Yes, so in the machine learning world, you there is a concept of feature, right? Based on what your model is trained on and feature set is something that, that can change. And based on that, uh, you have trained your model. So these are, uh, for a data scientist, the interesting parts that, you know, different users will come up with different parameters for these, different latitude, longitude, different, you know, day of the week. Um, and Tom, um, we went through a lot of information there. I mean, you can kind of bring us back around to where we started. About Thanks, Mark. Let me, let me just try to recap what we saw today. So what we showed is two non-stateless applications, TensorFlow and Jupyter Notebooks, being deployed by a single operator, Cube Director. That means we don't have to write specific operators for either of those two applications. What we showed is we deploy those in multiple configurations, not only uh, training, but also inference. And we did that through the use of these YAML files. What we showed is the sharing of connection information. That is a location where we trained a model then provide that train model and attached it to a completely different deployment cluster and started to use it for inference. And so what we've shown is the full end to end of how to actually do a pipeline with our taxi cab drive time model. And we did it all without having to write any Go code at all. We did it slowly by using the cube director CRD that's provided here in the open source community. Thank you, Tom and Kartik uh, for your excellent presentation. I think we made it pretty clear here uh, how you can build a dynamic machine learning pipeline using KubeDirector in your Kubernetes cluster. There's plenty of ways to contact us. As you can see our emails here, we have a Slack channel, and also on Twitter. Thank you for your time and interest, and we look forward to working with you.